സുപ്രണാമം സുസ്വാഗതം സന്ധ്യ വന്ദനം ഫ്രണ്ട്സ് വെൽക്കം ടു ദ വെബിനാർ ഓൺ ലിറ്ററജിക്കൽ മ്യൂസിക് പ്ലാസിക് പൊടിപ്പാറ സെൻറ്റർ ഫോർ ഈസ്റ്റേൺ ആൻഡ് ഇന്ത്യൻ ക്രിസ്ത്യൻ സ്റ്റഡീസ് കംസ് അണ്ട് ദ ഫാക്കൾട്ടി ഓഫ് തിയോളജി ഓഫ് ധർമ്മാരം വിദ്യാക്ഷേത്രം ബാംഗലൂർ ഇന്ത്യ and it organizes several programs annually the objective of the center is to promote research study and publication in the fields of eastern and indian christian life realities and activities for the placid podipara cmi was a luminary of the st thomas christians of india and contributed substantially to the drafting of the Vatican II document on Eastern Churches, Orientalium Ecclesiarum. This year, we have taken a subject close to the heart of every believer, that is, liturgical music. Music is the mantra of life, its joy, its beauty and its glory. Liturgical music is a lifeline of the live relationship of the assembly with the Lord, the land and the people. Music goes beyond the boundaries. Liturgical music is a movement and a moment of the faithful in mingling with earth and heaven, in praising God, bringing peace on earth and rendering hope to human beings through their praise, worship, adoration and thanksgiving in the divine liturgy the liturgy of the sirumalaba church begins with the angelic hymn glory to god in the highest peace on earth and hope to human beings this angelic hymn at the nativity of jesus sets a pattern for the liturgical music commingling of earth and heaven my soul magnifies the lord and my spirit rejoices in god my savior the magnificat of mother mary is an outstanding liturgical hymn giving us a taste of the salvation history through the revelation and the historical intervention of the lord liturgical music is the vibration of the celebration of the assembly redeemed in Christ through the holy spirit to the glory of god come let's celebrate let's celebrate our life in christ through the better understanding of liturgical music the sor the tal and the layer of the liturgical assembly what you watch here is a segment of the webinar on liturgical music organized on 10th february 2021 by placid podipara center for eastern and indian christian studies at the dvk bangalore come let us sing a new song to the lord amen father dr mp george is a professor of liturgy and suriyak music in orthodox seminary kottayam He is the Dean of Shruti School of Music and Director of Sarga Bharati Academy of Music and Arts, Nkotayam Public Library. He is a music director, composer and conductor. He is specialized in Suriyak classical music, Western classical music and Carnatic music. He has also performed Philharmonic concerts in 2015 and 2016 at Kottayam and Ernakulam. His newly composed symphony, The Song of an Indian Cuckoo, is the first symphony composed and performed in Kerala. Let me welcome Dr. M.B. George for the keynote address. Sing a song to the Lord, Fundamentals of Liturgical Music. Over to you, dear Father. Glory be to the Triune God, the Father, Son and Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. I am very much thankful to Reverend Father Paul Kochapulli for invite, inviting me as a participant in this great 
and valuable and meaningful webinar be as a speaker and I, I am looking before my screen i am very much reluctant to say something because many scholars are in front of my screen anyway as a member of the west syriac orthodox church priest i'm going to share my own feelings to my dear friends it may be acceptable may not be accept it's not, it doesn't matter just i am going to share my feelings in front of my friends i have some experiences from vadavadur catholic seminary vidyapeet i was also teaching there so being as a member of that community i have a lot of experiences in the on the uh, background of this liturgical music i have some net problem here if it i miss some somewhere else please excuse me it's not my mistake it's because of the problem of the device i am so i am dedicating myself to god for giving me more strength to share my feelings in front of you our vice chancellor president rector all faculty of dvk dear students dear fathers dear sisters and those who are participating in this conference let me share my feelings before you about my vision on the liturgical music only some fundamentals of liturgical music if you have any questions you can write it down in the screen so that i can answer just now or later i will give to father paul kochapuliach let me begin with music music is considered to be the rhythmic movement of sound the history of its origin may differ from place to place and country as well to me the history of music may goes up to the movement of the universe music is the rhythmic movement of sound the indian music theory explains the two divisions of music that is margi that is sacred music and deshi that is popular music music is the gift that is given to the universe by god it's a blessing to the human race to praise and worship him not only men but also the whole living things are singing and praising the lord through music music was considered as the best weapon of weapon to sages to sharpen their mind by reciting melodies religions are the treasure houses of music worship is the soul of religions and music is the soul of worship liturgy is the word is derived from two greek words litos and ergos it means public work liturgy is the form of public worship liturgy consists of prayer rituals hymns order of service and thanksgiving service worship and liturgy are different worship is the prayer of a community but apart from this liturgy is a form of worship full of sacred actions offering to god praises with special hymns and chants according to the syrian church liturgy is considered as the eucharist or holy communion also it is known as in the vesirian traditions known as kurobo or kurbano in isria kurbana all other official acts of the church are named as sacraments sacraments 
are the divine acts that are perfected by the Holy Spirit. So sacraments are spiritual. Christian churches give more emphasis to sacraments and also they are considered as a part of the divine liturgy. Sacraments give spiritual power to the faithful. Sacraments cleanse the body and mind. It comprises rituals, prayers, and songs. All sacraments, according to the Syrian churches, are perfected or completed by the Holy Communion. Liturgy in other religions. The concept of liturgy can be found in other religions too. Buddhism and Islam emphasize the importance of liturgy. Buddhist monks recite special slogans during their liturgy. It's because every religion gives emphasis to the need of liturgy to attain nirvana or moksha or eternal life. Religions which practice liturgy preserve in their hymns or chants also. Liturgical practices in Christian churches. Almost all Christian churches believe that liturgy is the commemoration of the birth, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Every liturgical form is perfected by the Holy Spirit. Without liturgy, Christian spiritual life will be meaningless. Liturgy is the commemoration of the act of Christ in the Last Supper by giving his body and blood. After the institution of the Last Supper or the Holy Kurbana, Jesus and his disciples sang a song and went to the Mount of Olives. In St. Matthew chapter 26, verse 30, St. Mark chapter 14, verse 26, then they sang a hymn and went out to the Mount of Olives. The Byzantine church gives more importance to liturgical music in this context. They sing a song, maybe a psalm, with the natural voice. So according to the Byzantine tradition, they won't use any musical instruments in the church. They sing with their natural voice and praise the Lord. So that tradition that moved to the other neighboring churches like Russian Orthodox Church, they are all reluctant to use musical instruments in liturgy. The method of singing without singing is known as a cappella, means singing in a chapel or a church now in the Western music, that word is very common, singing without instrument. The early Christian church up to the fourth century was in a secluded form. Those who joined the Christian church gathered in different houses, uh, reading prophetic writings, singing psalms and breaking bread and command as commanded by Jesus Christ. But in the fourth century, after the conversion of Constantine, the great uh, Roman emperor to Christianity, the church came out from the nutshell of persecution. The fourth century is considered as the century of theology and liturgy. All the prevailing theological disputes were solved by this synod, especially in Nicaea. The Christian church, according to Hudaya Canon by Bar Hebrews of the West Syria. Father, Father George, yes. could, could, could he conclude in two minutes? Oh, my God. Okay. We are running so, late. Yeah. Okay. So he is uh, yeah, giving. Good. Okay. He is giving. He is say, a, a clear picture about what type of church that separated in the fourth century. So in the fourth century started the liturgy and liturgical music at its the foundation era, according to the Christian church. 
So that's why St. Paul from his epistle, St. Paul gives some narration about how to worship, how to sing in liturgy in churches. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 19 and Colossians chapter 3 verse 16, it gives three different parts. That is sing, chant, hymn, and song. I won't like to explain that type of explanation here because time is very much limited. So in churches, we have to sing in the model of chant and hymns. Both are praises. Chants are praises like psalms. Hymns are a special type of metrical structurally composed songs. They are all praises, but songs are not included in the liturgy because that they are praising the personal matters. The other two are praising the Lord. The purpose of liturgical music is to glorify the triune God. So that wise we are joining to the Holy Trinity. It should be a solemn. It should be in a normal voice. It is not a performance. So people experience from it. All the panicles, hence from the family of the same. It should be meditative, contemplative, and spiritually and enriching. And what about the modern time? Is there any possibility of composing new songs to our liturgy? Yes, there are. We have to compose new melodies for liturgy. So we are practicing the ancient chants and song in the liturgy, but we have the possibility to compose, but its style should be more justified to be used in the liturgy. It shouldn't be a performance. It should be a pious one. It can be with or without instrument, but human voice is important here. So it should be very much carefully handled. Each and every church have its own right, its own freedom to compose and use music. I think the Holy Synod of each and every church have the authority to control how the liturgy and liturgical music is to be performed. It should be universal. There should have a uniformity in church singing. So I'm concluding. Liturgy should be worth, it will be fruitful by spiritual praises, spiritual practices, because we are under the wings of the Holy Spirit while we are conducting services. So our music should be in that way. It should be pious. It should be filled with the Holy Spirit. Let all things, all thanks, praise the Lord, sing the Lord, and enrich with the Holy Spirit. Thank you very much for inviting because time is, I'm just concluding. Thank, thank you, Polachen. All dignitaries to be part as a part of, especially Kuriakos Elias Sachin's 216th birthday. I'm also dedicating myself to God and also praying for Kuriakos Elias Sachin in his intercession to remember me to thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you all. Thanks, Dr. M.B. George, for taking us to the world of liturgical music through your keynote address.